The ISRL Super Formula Championship, of which we're on race five here at the Red Bull Ring in the mountains of Austria. It's race five, and as it stands, Raiden has taken a commanding lead in the Drivers' Championship. However, Raiden is not in this race, which works well for every other driver that's trying to dramatically close down that gap to the championship. And it turns out we have just gotten 150 subscribers on the channel. I am happy for that, so thank you to a lot of you, whoever was 150. Thank you guys. But we must get on with the racing. So here we are. Just share the stream to Discord. We shouldn't see what actually. Come on. There. Right, we are Sun 80s now, ISRL, Super Formula Championship this time. So then, what have we got at the moment? We've got a grid of, I think it's nine at the moment. Let me just check, I was joined. Yep, okay, so Humpty is gone, that's for now. Uh, yes, yeah, so nine cars right now. He's back. Perfect. We will be going in to the stuck check in two minutes. So we've got Racer Tay who is continuing on his run in the Super Formula under Yogg's T Racing Colours as Gemini has left for some reason. G is now second as it's his second in this little practice session for Infinity Racing. He very nearly won in the Nürburgring, but unfortunately he didn't. Nike Donna is now the other Yorks team came out in third is going to look to try and really close on that gap. The chance of win has really been blown wide up, and I feel very close race in the Nürburgring. Anything can happen. Walter has had a brilliant Nürburgring performance and is really looking to continue that momentum going here today. Ruti as well in fifth place. But as it sounds, wasn't in the last race for Infinite, the newly named Trinity Racing. A three guy just behind him, of course, at the moment in the practice session for Rottenbury Racing. Right and Lord in Sonic Racing, whose teammate is not with us at the moment. Ponte the Ponte in the Red Bull, the home team, is actually running a special K5 livery for this race. As is the other Red Bull car of Giante Gemini, who is indeed the American who is replacing Gat Gaming. And so as far as some scores, Gemini is the only one. We will do the stuck check in a minute, which I will announce to the people. Stuck. Check. Check. One. Min, which then leads on to a 10 minutes qualifying. Of which we then have a 24 lap race here around the Red Bull Ring. And it's promising there to be an exciting one. As Knight Donner flies his way through the first corner all over the curb. The elevation change here is absolutely monstrous around what is a brilliant track with only 10 corners on it. It's not a long track by any stretch of the imagination. They're lapping 114s, but it's still earning. It's a brilliant challenge for the drivers with the constant up and downhill at the top. This is going to be a key overtaking point here in the race as Vinci comes into what is turn three, and we will call it turn three. Uh, because that's the official corner name. Turn three then is a key overtaking spot, as is this. Turn four, bottom of the hill, down a long straight, harboring turn again. If you get overtaken there, get the exit, break it at turn four, you can make the move done there as well. Thanks, can just go all the way to the cars then? And as far as real overtaking points, those are the only two serious ones. You can get into the first corner, but it's not the easiest thing. With it being a short apex. We will now do the stuck check then. Because I think everyone's ready, I just have to come up. Oh yeah, quickly addressing something. Uh, Budge is not with us today. Um, because he's had to go out, so he's having to do something. So Budge is not with us. So we'll do the stuck check. Well, they'll do the first couple of guys. The Yorkshire Tea car on my bonus is great time for the Yorkshire Tea signing on. Knight Donner keeping him with and Racer Tay after he reserved for one of the Red Bulls in the Nürburgring. Here we go then on the grid for the stuck check. You can see the two Yorkshire Tees, the bright orange and white cars. Only nine people with us. A bit unfortunate we've not got more, but it's the way it is, I'm afraid. Who 
road comes out on top of the stop check lane. 24 laps are ahead of us when we get to the actual race. Where are the lights? Here are the lights now, and it's go, it is go, go, go. And Orion Love looks to have a great start. We had an interesting start to the last race. Walter's trying to get down the inside into turn one. Oh, there's contact! There is contact! And McDonald goes off. Well, someone punted him, and in fact, right now he's Walter with him and Gene Marie. And so there's your stuck checks with the two, two Red Bulls, which I must say is an absolutely stunning Red Bull livery. Yeah, pride, the, the, the pride flag works remarkably well, I must admit. Well, that is the slip check, which leads on to a 10 minute qualifying once Ruti and Gemini leave. The race has been cancelled. That does leave us with the next 10 minutes to qualify in the positions. As we see who it is that challenged themselves first out on the track. I've gone out on track. That was an error. That was not what I intended to do. Anyway, so Vim and G's first out on the road with Walter behind. I guess Slowstream, it can come in handy around here. It, it, it can come in handy around this track because with the long straights as well and everything. Anyway, and it, but obviously with oh, Gemini's gone again, I'm not sure why. I wonder if there's connection issues or something. Ideal, uh, not by any stretch of the imagination. But here's Vim and G then. So Vim and G will be the first one to lead us on round the lap. And in fact, I think we might go on board and we'll get to see my super serious track guides for the Red Bull Ring. It is a circuit that I personally really like. Uh, but we shall see how Vim and G gets around it then as we ride on board as he comes to the final corner. Disconnected. Uh, so around the final corner then, onto the main straight, it's crucial to get a good straight line speed as you rise up the hill. The fact that it's an incline means you can brake typically later right away across the curb, attack the apex on the inside, try not to go too far out wide, but accelerate as soon as you can, it's flat the whole way up this hill now. The whole way up the hill, flat, it curves around turn two, brake just after 100 meter board, slow it right down. Turning, you've got to be really careful for grip there. There's as much grip as a non stick frying pan at the top of turn three. Down the straight, then again at full speed, another overtaking spot is down the straight. You see Walter getting our pockets on a slipstream break between the 150, 150 meter board. Then accelerate round, it curves round, so you've got to keep on your toes, you've got to keep turning round, you don't want to can't drive too out, because you need to take these corners with as much speed as possible, don't overstep the corners right the way across the curb. It's been a relatively tidy lot from Vip, we've not really made any mistakes. Across there, you could be careful with that curve, it's easy to get a penalty with it. Now into these final two corners, it's as fast as you dare, breaks just after the 50 meter board, it rolls it through, accelerates round. Really careful with the curve there, because that curve, you attack that curve too much, massively unsettles the car. And I know what's just happened to Vitman, who's Walter has just taken provisional pole position with a 1 minute 14.4. But Racer takes immediately gone quicker, a 14 0, really strong lap there from Racer Tate. As he takes provisional pole with Walter on the front row. Next up is Hunty the Ponty. We'll see if he lives up to his name in this race. Right and lad in fifth. He comes up to the line, he goes fourth. Right and goes fourth row. Ruti is the next person across the line, he goes fifth. Night Donner in the other Yorkshire tea car. He's just seen his teammate go on provisional pole. Will this put pressure on the Croatian to try and get as quick a lap to get as close to that pole position time as he can? That was a brilliant lap from Walter, who currently sits P2, an impressive Well, I know Nike Donner gets a penalty, that's going to affect his time, and then it wasn't looking like the best time anyway, 15 8 so that puts him ahead of Root and ahead of Hunter, and three guys coming down the final section, now we'll see if this is there any form of improvement um, on 8th place, I mean it must be sure, unless he's gone really so Hunter, a 16-1, is going to be disappointed for that. Whereas in three guy comes around the final corner now, comes up to the line. It's actually 17-3, that is not a very good line. It's Gemini on a fly lap now, although he's got damage to the front of the car. Hunter and Wrighton are getting very close to each other in P4 on that second row of the grid is Wrighton. 
impressive qualifying from him. Nick Donner knows he's going to want to improve on that time. But Walter has been the star of those first runs at the moment. Where is Gemini then? Let's see. Going very slow. I think there's just burning fuel at the moment. But that is a very impressive performance from Walter. So he gets currently on the front row of the grid. I don't think anyone's anticipating that. That is a brilliant lap from Walter. But will this stay like this? Who did have his name IGTL. And uh, unfortunately, that means that the only way to change now is to pay. He is three tenths up on Vitman G. You've, he has to be happy with that, uh, with that time. Because he's finally sat on the front row and three tenths ahead of Vitman. Right and left, half a second down on Vitman. Knight Bonner is really attacking these final couple of corners now. Flies it through the final corner. I think he's cut the apex there, cut the curb across. Got to be careful to not get a penalty. And he's got another penalty. And that does not improve his time. In the end of things, he's still down in fifth. We're halfway through this session now. Gemini set a 39.5. Something tells me that's not a competitive time. Thing is, he's still burning fuel. Is he actually going for it now? I think it's a bit of both. He is actually going for the lot now. It's GRT Gemini. And M3 guy is not really going to be happy with his time. Race to chase a man who will be happy, and another man that will be happy is Walter. So Vitman G in P3 trying to just... I'm trying to just say, burn off fuel here. Where is Gemini going through the lap now? Is it up? It's 14 seconds up, which is not enough to increase his position. Gemini looks to be struggling to get to grips with that car. We've seen that Rookie's reserves struggle. Walter really is benefiting from the slipstream of other people here with Hunter behind behind Hunter. But now Root is coming out of the pits. This looks to cause chaos in the qualifying lap. Walter and Hunter, what are you doing racing each other? And Root is just an innocent bystander at the top of the hill. Walter's going down the inside. Rooty's parked off the track. I think there was contact between Hunter and Walter. Not certain what was going on there. I don't think either of them have improved from that. If anything, there's a lot of time there. A bit disastrous, really, when you think about it. We've all been in such a strong position and Hunty wanting to improve that time. He's unable to do so. And uh, now Hunty's following Walter for his final sector. The final sector is really ideal to be following someone because. You don't, and you're half a second down now if you're Humpty, who is, well, half a second down and with only like three minutes to go, he's going to want to improve that time. Rooty then in P6, his teammates third, I mean, Walter's still miraculously on that front row of the grid with Vitman G on an outlap now, so I can't see Vitman G improving anytime soon. Knight Donner comes out of the pits then. Rooty is coming up to the line to begin his flying lap with his teammate on third at the moment. He's in six, a strong performance at the moment. Knight Donner is one that's wanting to improve. I'm sure of that he's going to want to improve that course on time because that's not a Knight Donner time. He knows he could probably get right up there with Racer Tay, Vipper Gene, even Walter somehow, who just comes through at turn three. He's not actually been able to get anywhere close to that time. Humpty now trying to benefit from a bit of a distant tour on Walter. He really worked a treat for Walter. So what I was saying about following another car might not be the most beneficial. I've just been proven completely wrong. Because Walter is on the front row of the grid. And could we possibly... There I say, see Walter on the podium for this race. We're going to see now if Hunter is coming through the final sector, which he is. Is he there? Knight Donner dropped off a lot from the lead, but I don't think he wants to get too close because uh, that will cost him time. Just one and a half temps up will improve his position to sixth. Two seconds up, and he'll take the original pole away from Racer Tay, who's having the exact opposite to his performance at the Nurburgring cross line. He doesn't improve by this small, tiny margin. It's time to start seeing who is going to improve their time. Walter, I can't see him improving. That was a phenomenal lap immediately. Vim and G knows he can get on the front row. He's got the capabilities to do so. He looked very slow through there, so I don't think this is an actual... I feel this might be an aborted lap. I'll try and get one more run at the end. I think Razor Tay is going to get another lap in. Walter might get one more lap in. Vim and G is definitely going to get a lap or two in. Maybe even two laps, yeah. 
So it's a bit too early to start thinking as we hit the nine minute, minute mark. I might, I think Racer T is going to get one final lap in. Walter's going to get one final lap in, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon they'll just get a lap in. Vim and G will get this final lap then. To see Vim and G then final lap to try and put himself on the front row. Right and loud, I can't see him getting across the line to start lap. Night Donner, I think he's improving on his time. So at the death of things, he is going to get, I think, just one final run at this to try and improve, get him onto that second row of the grid. This is going to be enough, he hasn't cut the final corner, he's looking really strong, this is an impressive lap here from Knight Donner, is it good enough? Here goes P4, and puts him on the second row of the grid, right at the death of qualifying, Racer T is now giving, Hunting's got straight on, Hunting goes straight on, at the first corner, so I don't think he's improving his time in the end, Vidman G is coming down into turn 3, he's just seen Knight Donner pop up into 4th place, is Vidman G going to be able to get onto that front row of the grid, with, either, with Racer T, where is Walter, Water on? a flying lap with dead times like that, I can't see him improving, qualifying is over. Just let them know, qualifying is over. So, Vitman G, is he improving on his time, is he going to be able to get on the front row of the grid? Here at the Red Bull ring, is this going to be enough? Vitman G comes around the final corner, he's ran extremely wide, that might give him a penalty. But is this enough? It do, it's not enough. Walter is on the front row of the grid unless McDonough can improve his time. It might be a really, really distant tour from Racer T. Knight Donner into the final couple of corners now. Does Knight Donner get on the front row of the grid? Or even be Vim and G? Is this enough to get anywhere closer to his teammate? He's already on the second row. Is this enough? It's, it's a tiny, tiny improvement. Right and Lord comes through to finish his lap, I believe. Runs wide out of turn nine into turn ten at the final corner and it's not an improvement. So there we go, there you have it. There is your grid right and ladder just jumped into fourth place because I think some cars are now in the pits. I need to now allow uh, the different tyres that they can use for the race. Let them know to change tyre and go through first sector. everyone that gets through the first sector to set in their laps and the grid is fully established we will have in a little bit of a break have a little bit of a break and then we'll get going So then, here we go, I think everyone's on the grid, Gemini, actually no, that's a line, no, not everyone's on the grid, we're waiting for Knight, Donner and Vintman G to go on. I think they've asked for a break, which is understandable, but as we wait then, Racer T actually got a 13-5, an absolutely astonishing race time from Racer T, that was an incredible one. But and, and a fascinating lap that was indeed. There he goes. So then let's just take a quick look at what we have for now. We've got Razor Tay on the softs, Walter on the hards, Wrighton on the mediums, who will not actually start P3. We need Gemini to go out to the track as well. They're all waiting at the top of the hill at the car park. The cars are on the track. We've got Walter hards, Wrighton mediums, Rooty mediums, Auntie hards, and three guy hards. Night Bomber, Mediums, Gemini, Hards, 
Interesting choice then from race tape because the general consensus, as usual, is to start the mediums or the hards because the softs don't last. Now, with Walter on the hards, I think he started on the hards last time and it really worked for him and was we well, argued he could have been a contender for a podium and now he's very much a contender for the podium because there's just a downright exceptional lap from Walter. To get on the front row of the grid and share that front row with race down, I don't think Walter's ever been up there in a league race. That is probably Walter's best ever qualifying performance. Ever. I think there's Gemini coming to join us as well. So we are now all waiting on Vitman G to race us with his presence here today in the Super Formula race. And then we are ready to get the show on the road here at the Red Bull Ring. You can feel the you can hear the engines as we donut our way to victory. We're all waiting on Vitman G. So then, the Oxity of Racer Tay on pole position. MJ Walter in the WAR car has done an incredible job to get on that front row. P3 at the moment is Knight Donner. I think that's actually Vitman G though in third. With right Knight Donner sharing that second row for the other T car. Right and lad, the only Sonic racing car to show up today is in fourth. Rooty, P5 for the Infinity racing car. Although it's actually P6 because... Vitman G's now out yet, which means 7th is Hunter the Ponte when Vitman G shows up in the, well, the home team. 7th, or 8th, sorry, yeah, now it's 8th, is M3 guy, and ninth place is Gemini, subbing in for Gab. There is Vitman G, let's just take a look at his ties. He's also on the softs, so we've got an interesting race in our hands, with 1st and 3rd on the soft tyre. Are we ready to go racing? I think we are ready. This is it. Round five, the first race, the second half of the season in the Red Bull Ring is good to go. Here we are then, it's the final, here in the Styrian mountains of Austria. Race at a pole position, and miraculously, it's Walter on the front row. Wittmann G third, Knight Donner fourth, and there is the rest of the grid. 24 laps are ahead of us here today, and who will come out victorious in the fifth round of the Super Formula Championship? It's been a brilliant season so far, we had a cracking race at the Nürburgring. What can we expect today? You can never expect anything. Lights out, and away we go, it's a great start from Tay, he's managed to run away with it at the start, Vitman G's also had an impressive, there's the contact in the background, contact in the background, Honti, Gemini, and M3 guy, what has happened there, the two Red Bulls have collided, and the home race, just seconds after the lights gone out, M3 guy's round, and Racer Tay then leads away, Vitman G's second, Walter drops down to fourth place now, behind Ruti, and Ruti pulls himself ahead, Walter on those hards is getting swallowed up by the field, in fact he's got damage to the rear, of the car and uh, at the moment now Walter having to defend from right and left it's really not been a dream start for Walter in fact Knight Donner has also had a bit of an iffy start as well as right and left now gets through and into fourth place Knight Donner is P6 and not far behind Walter's going to try and get back what on earth happened to the two Red Bulls at the start and them three guy just absolute chaos as the grid unfilled just seconds we didn't even make the first corner and there was already a crash We, I told you not to ex expect the expected. And in fact, here we go, the Knight Donner on the back of Walter. Knight Donner's trying to get down the inside on Walter going into turn nine. Is he made it? Yes, he has. Gap Gaming watching over how his sub and his teammate have collided with each other seconds off the line at the team's home race. It's turned into a shrewd nightmare, but then again, 
Red Bull do have a history of driving into each other in Grand Prix. So Knight Donner has to force to get off the off the track there to try and find his way past the right guard. Vim and G, Racer Tech has absolutely won this start. There's miles off already. Rooty is doing an incredible job in third place. Knight Donner's trying to get around the outside. Overtaking action. Right and left trying to get down the inside. Under braking into turn three. But that's not enough. And Knight Donner is on a mission now. Up into fourth place for the Yorkshire TT. And now then, right and left moving up the order now in fifth place. Trying to close that gap down using overtake. No, he's not. Knight Donner in P4. Oh, he's got a bit of a slide on from right, and that means Walter is now uh, he has now closed that gap up a little bit. So then, here we go. Ruti, Vitman G is second. Race T is absolutely running away with it now. Vitman G, who had Ruti, the two Infinity racing cars, are doing an incredible job in third and fourth. Nobody's here to represent good smart racing who are absolutely running away with the constructors at the moment and so this is a crucial time to take points away from them and from Raiden in the championship. Right turn lad then in the slipstream of McDonough he's trying to fall he's trying to fall he's trying to fall is this going to be enough for right turn lad he's not quite close enough going into the first corner. Lap three then already as we can see the laps immediately starting to tick down then here we go right turn lad as we ride no we don't Right and are trying to catch up to Knight Bonner on the back straight coming up the hill in it to turn four. It's not quite enough for now. It's not quite enough as Right and Lard is trying to catch on to Knight Bonner. So they're on at this back straight and down into turn three. It's a great place to overtake. Right and not used uh, an inch, he's not used anything of his overtake button yet. Right and Lard though, he, but he's still trying to catch up to Knight Bonner to get into P4. Knight Bonner has, all, has had only two podiums. I think he's fighting for second in the championship against Right and Lard. However, Knight Bonner's team is playing an incredible job out in the lead of this race. But Knight Bonner is closing that gap up, however, to Ruti. So we could see Knight Bonner manage to find his way past Ruti very soon indeed. One second is now the gap. And it's still decreasing, it's still decreasing, it's dancing. Now, Knight Donner within a second now of Rooty. Is he closing in up the street? He's still closing in. Overtake is in action here from Knight Donner as he attempts to catch up to the back of Rooty now. He's attempting, he's giving everything now in the slipstream, trying to come through. He's getting very close now to Knight Donner. He's following through. Here he goes, then in on the straight, a long straight he comes in down here we go then he's following he's following the Oxford T cars getting close and close he's within four temps of Rusi for a spot on the top three and he doesn't want to be getting much closer now in fact in the background at the very back with the M3 guy and Gemini getting incredible close now obviously these two were involved in a first lap collision I say first lap like literally your first 10 seconds of the race Knight Donner is incredibly close now to Rooty as he's all over the back of him now then he's in the slipstream does he pull out to make a move into the penultimate corner at turn 9 no he doesn't he's supposed to the outside tries to get the run as he flings it through now in that orange and white faded Yorkshire T car is this enough for Knight Donner to go onto the top three here he goes then in the slipstream he's giving everything he can he's closing in in the slipstream no use of car under braking in toward the first corner does he try and get the exit i think he does is he close enough though is he close enough to go for an overtake he's using the overtake button but he's not quite close enough Ruti's forcing him to get to the outside he's being forced to go to the outside line and around the outside goes knight donner knight donner is through but Ruti's flown straight back into third place and so that does mean that Ruti is into third. Knight Donner's failure to get through has allowed right and land now to get really close in contention for P3 right now. Here we go then. Is this enough for right and land? Who gets a slide coming out of turn four? Knight Donner's very close. He's getting very aggressive now. Really wanting to try and get that podium here in Red Bull Ring. On those medium tyres compared to the medium tyres of Ruti. Knight Donner seems to be slightly worse for wear, especially the rear's right and lad is also on the medium tyres. No real change in strategy for them. However, interestingly, the top two are both on softs, so Knight Donner tries to get down the inside. Not quite enough for now. 
trying desperately to get through. Meanwhile, in the background, we've got M3 guy who's found his way ahead of GRT Jet and I. So then, we've got Ruti and Knight Donner. Knight Donner has a penalty which he has served on the men's straight. Wrighton's got exceptionally close now. He's all over the back of him, really trying to follow. Pops the power down and hammers his way down, leading his way up the straight now. Here it comes in to turn that what? Uh, turn three out of the top of the hill. It's a key place to watch for an overtake. It's not quite an awful look how close Wrighton is. He's all over the back of him. He's got a bit of wheel spin coming out of the corner. Now Wrighton, this is the time to deploy your overtake button, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything. And now, does this mean Wrighton's not going to be able to make the move? It does indeed, because he's not close enough. He's not positioned himself well to get that overtake done. The top two are absolutely running away with it. Moreover, Tay is absolutely dominating the start of this race from pole position. He's just led away, he had the start he needed, and he's leading away now. Knight Donner, P4, P5, right and last. So here we go, is right again close. Knight Donner always runs up at the top of that curb, he's not seemingly penalised for it. So I mean, it must be legal if the game's not giving him a penalty for it. Here comes Wright and Laddie on the slipstream of Mike Donner, of Ruti, to getting the uber mega slipstream of two cars in front. In fact, someone spun, someone has to, it's Racer Tay! He spun out of the first corner from the lead of the race, he was doing so well. Absolute drama as he plummets down the order like a rock in the ocean. What has happened there? An absolute mess, Mike Donner tries to get down the inside on Ruti to ruin an infinity race in one, two. Mike Donner tries to get down these, Mike Donner spins! He's lost did both Yorkshire tees and spun within a two corners of each other. Absolute chaos. He was running first and fifth, fourth. Now they're running fourth and fifth. Disaster. Infinity racing are now running one and two in this race. What happened to Tay? And that's going to have absolutely demolished the tyre life. And I think that's what's caught him out here, is that the tyres are just dead. And they definitely are after he spun. Walter is now dramatically closing in. Absolute chaos at the front as not as Racer T has surely lost what was pretty much a done deal in the lead of this race. He was looking so strong up in front. Vitmanji then in at two at the pit lane. Ruti in second, right in line third, Knight Bonner fourth, race time assuming will also be pitting in. Yes he does into the pit lane. Comes Racer T from those soft tires. So the softs made several laps in the end. The mediums are probably gonna make ten. And then that means that the hards will probably make 12. So I reckon a hard tyre stint, of which we've got Hunty, we've got a 3 guy, we've got Gemini, and we've got Walter, could make it to the end. Whereas Knight Donner, Wright and Lad, and Ruti. So I think the hards are on for a one stop. The mediums are definitely on for two stop. Vimmon's gone, Vimmon's gone! Unbelievable scenes as Vimmon has just left the race. What is going on? I think. I think we're going to just describe that as an engine failure, but Sean has a disconnect. He would not have left when he was doing so well and could have been on cover for at least a podium. What is going on before that? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's a disconnect, which means that we're just going to like set that down and someone spot in the background. It is Walter has had a moment in fourth place. Race Tay has come out in sixth and only just ahead of M3 guy and Gemini. Meanwhile, toward the front, which is now fighting for the win of this race in the Red Bull ring. We've got Ruti and Reitenlard fighting for victory here today. All of a sudden. What has this race come to? It's been absolute scenes as the leader, or at least right, uh, G has DNF from the race. Racer Tay has spun right and left for the lead. Is he close enough? Not yet. He's not quite on it yet. Is he not using his slipstream? He's not using his overtake button. Why is he not doing that? I guess we will not know. Is he close right up? Here we go. And Ray Maroot has gone wide. Ruth has gone wide. Come out. 10 3. Right and Lad has gone for that. Knight Donna spins a bit in the background. And right and Lad comes down the inside. Side by side coming down the back straight now into turn 4. Now they come very close now to take the lead. Here comes Right and Lad. He has done it. Right and left, lead here. Oh, absolute disaster, Vitman. You were looking to win that race. You were sure looking to be a contender to win. 
but we're just going to call it as an, a mechanical failure in this race. However, your teammate is still within contention to win this race. Ruti, second place, has just lost the lead to right and left, with Knight on the third and chasing down Walter in fourth place, the highest place driver on the hards, one of only four cars I think it is on the hards. Yeah, four drivers on the hards, or at least it started on the hards. Race Dave's just now managed to find his way past Hunty, as pitted onto the hards. And I guess we'll never know what if the Vitlam G strategy was ever going to work out. Absolute scenes in this race has really been blown wide open all of a sudden. I told you at the beginning of the race, never to be, never to expect the expected, because none of this race is what any of us were expecting going in. In fact, Knight Bonner now peels to the outside, tries to get around the outside of the top of the hill at turn three, tries to get the switch back now, accelerates his way out the corner, not quite enough. Ruti has got full overtake button, whereas Knight Bonner has used nearly a half of it, and Knight Bonner is through and into second as he gets down the inside of Ruti, who was leading just a couple of laps ago. Down the inside goes Knight Bonner. The move looks to be done, and Ruti drops to third place. However, it's not all for nothing. Ruti looks to try and get down the inside. Not on this occasion, though. Surely these medium tyres, especially on Night Bonner, are going to have to pit in soon. Whereas Walter's hards look like they could keep going. This could be another phenomenal performance from Walter here in the league. So far, everyone that is still racing has given their absolute everything. If something has happened to everyone so far this race. In fact, Knight Donner, Ruti in. Is this an undercut attempt on right and left? Who is also starting on the mediums? He is going to be aware of this. He knows that they're going to do it. And I reckon they're going to pit on the hards now and try and get to the end. Race today. reckon he's also going to try and get to the end. Walter not going to pit in, but does Knight Donner's in the pit. Now Ruti is also in. This does mean Walter is going to take second place. Do you remember just a couple of weeks ago at the Nurburgring, Ring, Walter was leading. In fact, in fact, no, Knight Donner and Ruti, they've gotten out ahead of Walter. Although no, Walter's gone into third place and he's now ahead of Ruti again. And now chases down Knight Donner. Knight Donner's on the softs. Knight Donner is on the socks, Ruti is on the medium. This is a very interesting race. But strategic! And Walter goes straight on, so does Ruti. I think there was contact there between these two as Ruti goes past the yellow curve there to get back on the track. Absolute scenes is now race teeth drastically keening back in. I think they have made contact and they must have done because Walter has got damage to the rear of his car. And suddenly, from a strategic point of view, this race is blown wide open. Bright and loud, pit in a lap later. Finally found. Well, I'm glad you could join us. Right and large pits in one lap later than Knight Don. Now, where does Knight Donner come out? He's in second. Ruti doing a great job in third after making contact with Walter. Interestingly, Ruti's on the mediums. Knight Donner's on the softs. What does Right and large pit into? This could be absolutely interesting. Here we go then. Here's Ruti. Here's Walter all over the back. Here's Racer Tay trying to get a running outside. He was leading just a couple of laps ago. And he's going to try everything to push himself back up into the lead. Here he comes down the inside into the first corner an easy move where is right and left he's coming out the pits now Knight Bonner and Ruti are absolutely miles ahead and here's right and left and Racer takes ahead so right and left he's also pitted on the mediums this could get interesting now because here is Knight Bonner on the softs so he's going to extend that gap but he's got to pit in with like seven laps as we saw from the first then Gemini is the first hard runner tyre to pit in one of only eight runners left in this race unfortunately Race day third, fourth is Walter, fifth is right and wild. Walter doing an incredible job at the moment on the hard tyres, but has surely got to pit in soon enough. Race day is on the hards, and he's probably on a one stop. Ruti on the mediums, I reckon he's, he is on a two stop, as is right and wild, because they have to pit on two different tyres. In fact, right and wild gets around the outside, and he's down the inside on Walter. Gemini pits onto the soft tyres. Walter, I reckon, is coming to a close on this stint. So Wrighton and Ruti do have to pit again. Knight Donner is going to pit again because he's not making those softs last 12 laps. 
because I think only the hearts can do that. Race it here from a strategic point of view. Marv just had a master stroke, could get himself back up into the lead. However, at the end of the race, he's going to be on incredibly warm tyres. Now, Ruti, I reckon, is going to do mediums again, a pit onto softs, as is right and last. Whereas Knight Donner might have to pit in again and go on to mediums. So, we're going to see an interesting race where we have Knight Race to probably leading on a one stop on those hard, warm hard tyres. His N3 guy is in. Walter is continuing on again. Sure, he's got to pit in within a couple of laps now. He's definitely on a one stop. If he can get. Uh, we need about, what, 10 laps on mediums? If he can get just a couple laps more to lap 15, that's a one-stop, easy one-stop on medium tyres. Right and left is all over the back of Race Tears. Race Tears charged his way up in third place. Medium versus hard, and surprisingly hard has won out. Race Tears has been incredibly quick. Just a sheer disappointment of spinning out of the first corner has cost him what could be been an easy win. Now he's got to fight for it. See, Knight Donner is all over the place with strategy on soft tyres, but he's really extending that gap and he's pushing hard to get ahead of Ruti and really extend this gap. The thing is, this championship, unlike any, I mean, all the other championships do have strategy, but unlike most of the other championships or leagues in this ISRL, I must admit, I think the Super Formula 1 has the most varying strategies of them all and a race where strategy directly affects the outcome because we can see four different cars fighting for the win at the very end on different tyres which are all in completely different conditions so as I say, Tay probably can make it to the end but those tyres are going to have a shot by the end of it although he did pit on soft so he might have to pit with a couple laps to go and go back onto another set of soft tyres Vimin G was another man who started on soft and he's going to be utterly disappointed in that DNA which could have been a really easy victory for him today. Walter goes very wide and he's still going. I reckon he's going to go to lap 15 and pit onto the mediums, go to the end. Hunty, the punter, is continuing on on these hards. So Hunty and Walter, the only two that started on hards. Gemini's on the softs, which is an interesting strategy for Gemini. And three guy on the mediums, kind of makes sense. He pit from the hards to the mediums. Not sure if he's going to get it to the end, but I'm not sure what little hope he has after what was an art can only describe as a disastrous start at the beginning. Although Ninth Honor is doing an incredible job of pulling away from Ruti, which is what he needs to do if he wants to make his strategy work. Right and Lard is in P4 and all over the back of Racer Tay. Here he comes now then, right and Lard trying to chase down Racer Tay for P3 and a spot on the podium as it stands. However, the strategies are all over the place. You cannot predict who's going to win right now because whilst the gaps may seem like they're miles apart and in a way they are, it's really the tyres that everyone's going to be on at the end of the race is going to change the outcome of this race. And right and Lad is all over the back of Racer Tay. Is he going to be able to get close enough to him to make a move? He's used very little of his overtake button. And he's gone very close at the top of the hill across that curve at turn three. Right, Racer Tay is using his overtake now to try and defend against Right and Lad. It does seem to be working. He's pulled out a gap. But he's got just over a quarter of it left with just under half the race to go. Where is Walter? Walter's a long way behind and has still not pitted in. So Walter, I'm sure, is going to pit in surely within the next couple of laps. I think he is doing a lot of fuel saving. I was looking at Hunter when I was saying that. Walter could probably make it to lap 16. Here we go then. Right and Lad is over the back of Racer T. He's closing up. He's very close to him now. Is this going to be an opportunity to go for him? To make the overtake. He's surely going to try. And it's not quite enough. It is not quite enough on this occasion. Gets the exit out. Finalizes the exit. Here we go. Into the first corner. And he's using his overtake. His right and he's using a lot of it. He's draining it out as we run into the first corner. But at the end of the day, Racer T is pulling ahead there. So Walter into the pits on those off those hard tyres and Hunty stays out again. So Hunty's gonna go on a extra lap to Walter who pits in now. Brighton Lads managed Rice to take, he's managed to gap Brighton Lad a little bit, but on this straight, Brighton Lad's going to have the opportunity to go for it. Those fresher tyres, they're, they're not so much fresher, but as much they are softer, meaning they are faster. Obviously, everyone in this league has to use both well, not both. 
they have to use softs, mediums and hards, they have to use at least two of the three compounds available, Walter comes at P6, 12 seconds behind Hunter, it wears him three guy closing in, because he's got the momentum coming out, and I don't think it's quite enough. So, right and lad, this is still the really close battle on track at the moment. Right and lad trying desperately to find his way past race two. Uh, it's difficult to say whether Tay is going to make it to the end of this race on this stint. Or if he's going to have to sit it, pit in again. Knight Donner will be coming into the pits in the next couple of laps, that's for sure. As we saw the beginning, Soft, Race Tay and Vitman could only make the Soft go seven laps. I can't see Knight making him go for much longer pit than around lap 10, meaning Knight Donner is due a pit stop very shortly. Whereas Wright and Lad and Rooty are both expected to put in anyway and are probably going to come on the softs within the next couple of laps. Wright and Lad definitely could make it to the end if he was legally allowed to, but having started on the mediums, then pitting onto the no set of mediums means he does have to pit onto those soft set of tyres or the hards, but I reckon it's going to be soft because he's got not very long left to go, three, four, it's like seven laps to go. He can make those softs get to the end from now. So the window has opened for anyone wanting to pit onto the softs, I reckon. And I reckon Knight Donner might go just one extra lap and then pit in, possibly onto another set of softs to really go for it. That is what I'd do. Personally, if I was in Knight's position, he's gone in this lap though, so he's feeling a loss of grip, and into the pits he comes, Knight Donner. Rauti does go on then to take the lead of this race. Unsurprisingly, as he was behind, Racer Tay is continuing on. So then, it would be interesting to see if Knight Donner comes out on the soft tyres, I think he will. Just a quick fill up, and then surely the soft tyres are needed. I don't think he's going to go off much else. Rooty and Wright, and they're within the window now to pit in. Go on to the soft tyres. Rest is trying to keep that gap to Rooty very low in case. And um, yes, Knight Donner comes out. The softs confirming what we've been thinking uh, that the softs will make to the end of this race. Hunter is still going on a 17 lap stint on the hard tyre. That is impressive. Race day still though ahead of right and large. Surely these two are going to have to pit in soon. Right and he looks like he could make it to the end, but he surely knows that he has to pit in. I'm pretty certain he started on the mediums. If he'd have started on the hards and done that, then he's definitely within the position to continue going, but I'm fairly certain right and large did start on those medium tyres, as did Rooty. Rooty's going to probably pit in now for sauce anyway, as will right and Knight Donner then. You've got to pit in now as Rooty to cover off an undercut attempt from Knight Donner. And he's in. Rooty then pits in from the lead to cover off an undercut from Knight Donner off those mediums. He's surely going to come on to the softs. And Wrighton is also in. So Racer Tay, after spinning earlier on, is going to retake the lead of this race. Where is Knight Donner? Is Knight Donner close enough to take the lead back? And under successfully managed to get out in front of these two. So Rooty's in now off those mediums. Surely onto the softs. So I wouldn't expect them to go onto anything else. And so Knight Donner does indeed take second place, does he? Knight Race Day gets a penalty. It is indeed, currently as it stands, a Yorkshire T1-2. But how much longer can Race Day hold on against Knight Donner? His tyres are incredibly warm. And that gap looks to be coming down. And Hunty is the last driver to finally come off that first stint on lap 18. He's done an 18 lap stint on hard tyres. I must commend him for that. But here we go then. Knight Donner is going to have to close. He's got nine seconds behind Reste. If Knight Reste can keep it calm, which he's going to need to do. If he spins once, that's it. It's game over. Because not only will he lose a huge chunk of time, the tyres will be dead. But Knight Donner is gaining rapidly. Pitch now, Tay. If you can hear me, I. I reckon I'm I would pick now because those hards are clearly not quicker you'll come out you'll probably come out fourth but on fresh soft you might be able to carve your way through and he's but he's continuing on he looks like he's committed to taking this risk five laps to go will Knight Donner be able to close down seven seconds and overtake Racer Tay 
Overtake Racer Tape for the lead. The two Yorkshire T racing cars running one and two with an exceptional performance and could be the first. Oh, there's contact! There's contact! Gemini has made contact with Knight Donner. Well, Knight Donner trying to lap Gemini around the outside of the first corner. What has happened there? Just a bit of miscommunication there. Gemini tried to come to the inside. Knight Donner thought he could have had that and Gemini just made contact with him. An absolutely disastrous. So then that's given Knight Race here a little bit of time as he's chasing down and we can see Knight Donna is not going to be happy with that. He will be fuming with how what just happened there. But he's not going but he's not going to let that disappoint him. He's still going to push for it now. Knight Donna is going giving it absolutely everything. Rooty and Wrighton on the soft ties. Now Wrighton's got to try and lap Gemini. We'll see if this is potter pot Possible, possible. As Gemini goes straight on, he's going straight on there at turn five, I think that is. At turn six, sorry, he has gone straight on. So there we go. Disappointing day for the Red Bulls. But here we go. Then it's six and a half seconds. Is this enough at the moment? Will this be enough? Two. Pull that gap off between race day and Knight Donner. It's down to six and a half seconds. Knight Donner is pushing every ounce of skill that he's got in that car to try and catch up. He is quick. There. The top of the hill, as you could see him there, he's coming through that gap. He's being absolutely demolished. He's got four laps to try and catch up. 5.7 seconds to race a tape, and that gap is coming down absolutely rapid. We could have a scrap on our hands between the two Yorkshire T drivers. And the only thing, and this has just gone way more exciting, at the fact that they're on a team together, and you do not want to take your team out. We've already seen two teammates clash together at the very first lap, just seconds, just moments away from that first from the lights going out. The gap is down to 4.2 seconds. It's decreasing, it's decreasing, it is decreasing. Right and lad is trying to catch up now to Rudy, and I don't think he is doing so, but will it be enough for Ryan Lott to get on the podium? 3.7 seconds, it's coming down, it's coming down. It is 3.6 seconds going on to lap 22 with three laps to go. Race take can also be seen this gap as he's got very little overtake to use compared to that of Knight Donner, who's going into his final quarter now. That's also going to be a factor. Race take, you need to keep your overtake. Do not use it until you come into contact. But Knight Donner having more overtake than Race take means that that, me that does mean that he can use that to his advantage though he's using that to catch up when he should probably be saving that because he's catching up anyway as he's decreased the gap already from the start of this lap by nearly uh, 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 now a second that gap has come down by now a second 1.1 seconds 1.2 seconds yes is now 2.4 two and a half seconds back the gap is rapidly declining it looks like we're gonna have a final up sprint between Knight Donner and Racer Tay for the victory here today in the Red Bull ring here for the Austrian Grand Prix here in Austria it's been a brilliant race and it's not over yet I told you that the races are not over until the end and it's come down 1.3 it's come down two seconds at least and now he's within a second he is within a second of his teammate with two laps to go this race just got interesting one softs versus incredibly one hard he's been on those since lap seven he's done an incredible job of managing them but at this point i think tay should just concede the victory to night bomber because tay is really struggling he's just lost so much time it'd be pointless fighting but you know for a fact tay as he drains the last drop of his overtake has not, he's not going to give up easy. He's not going to go up without a fight. And here comes Mike Donner. He comes to the outside on the back straight. Here he comes Mike Donner. But the Yorkshire team is a swift team position. And Mike Donner goes through. Race tape. Does he go back down the inside? No, he does not. Mike Donner takes the lead on the penultimate lap of the Grand Prix. 
absolutely sensational drive there from Nike Bonner to charge down what was like 10 seconds just a couple of laps ago. Ruti is really decreasing the gap. Two and a half seconds. A Yorkshire T12 could be at risk here as Ruti attempts to take second place for Infinity Racing now. As races, but with all that, Wright and Lad is within a second of Ruti. This race is still ongoing as Wright and Lad has actually managed to get the fastest lap, which shows that they are actually going for it now. Racer T on the hard tyres has really gotten them worn out and is really struggling. It doesn't look to be going easily for him. Ruti is trying to cover off half a second gap to Ruti, whilst also trying to gain 1.3 seconds on the race down the final lap. This race is about to get interesting. On the final lap, three drivers can take second place. It has all come down to this. Wrighton is gaining. He's got no slips overtake. Ruti's got no overtake. Tay's got no overtake. This is all on skill now. Ruti goes for a dive bomb. He's gone for it into turn three. Contact has taken us off, and he's not even on the podium. Race Tay's thrown away even a podium chance though I think there may have been contact between Ruti and Wrighton lad so a collision there that's going to have to be under investigation as Race Day throws what could have been a victory away on a silly mistake Wrighton lad is now into third place Wrighton lad not giving up yet here he goes for third place now in third he's managed to get a podium what's happened to Race Day over these last couple of laps the race has just ended far too late for him but can Wrighton take second place away from Ruti at the final lap going into the penultimate corner Ruti goes defensive Wrighton goes to the outside but your winner of this season one Austrian Grand Prix is Yorkshire T's Nike Donner wins in Austria Ruti does come across line second third right and fourth race to fifth is Walter who a bit disappointing given the qualifying position and there was just so much promise in that car at the start but it just all came to an unravel the home team then somewhat disappointed with this performance Humpty in sixth and Gemini in eighth seventh is M3 guy eighth place is GRT Gemini on his Super Formula debut being a lap down as well unfortunate for him and the team and Viminji is your only DNF but Knight Bonner, Ruti and Wrighton Lord win is your top three with race today being exceptionally close you can see there it's all coasting around now how close that was at the end really unfortunate for race today that looked like a victory was on his cards but I feel like he might not be happy with that one because that looked to me it was a very late dive bomb from Ruti uh, so it looks like we could have a couple of incidents to look over in this race. So there is your official final results. Mike Bonner is Ruti from Wright and Lad. And an exception, another brilliant race from them today. That was indeed awesome. That was an exceptional performance from all of our finishers and racers. It was really unfortunate for Vitman G. But in the end of the day, that was a brilliant race from all of them. Now we obviously do the relatively traditional to this at this point, uh, post-race interviews where we will talk to our top three of the race this evening, which was, uh, it was, three, uh, no, Knight Donner, Ruti and Wright and Wild. So I need to find these guys now. I thought, there's, I thought it'd be easier to just do it this way, wouldn't it? Knight Donner, Wright and Wild and Ruti. Just bear with me guys. Bollocks, that incident was my fault. I forgot about TCC. Ah, so that's what happened at the start. I saw a huge crowd. Didn't really understand what was going on. Unfortunately, we've been live and I don't have a keyboard. We don't have access to replays. But it did look like quite the collision. Great effort, Gemini, Monty, Ruti, and everyone. So we invite our top three now in for the podium interviews to ask them. A couple of questions. Let them know what the race was like from their perspective. Hello, Nike. Hello, good evening, gentlemen. Hello, Wrighton. Hello, right. Hey, right. Good evening, right. Oh, we're just waiting. We're just waiting for Ruti now. Oh, 
thousand or so weeks when I've been there to Ajata. <laughs> oh, I just couldn't get around here and keep it off. Oh. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Right. <laughs> now we're all here. Uh, first, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, well done to the three of you. You drove well. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if any of you noticed because you were all more toward the front, but there was a huge crash on, like, not even turn one, just like seconds after the light. Did any of you yeah, notice I was, that? I also, I got, I got bumped into turn one, into the car in front, I had damage back and front. Mm. But yeah, then again, after that, really good race, really nice clean racing. Got it for a bit, dropped out. Yeah, I think Whitman dropped out due to a uh, disconnect. Oh no, the Night Bomber, um, the strategy worked well for you then. On this occasion. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Really did. Yeah, I didn't have any practice, to be honest. <laughs> I just uh, messed up the last time, so I wasn't going to repeat the same mistake and use hearts. Yeah. How, how much were you pushing then at the end of that race? Not much at the end. It's just, uh, I think I lost a lot of time behind. See, the first thing, I was a lot quicker. I just couldn't find a way through. But yeah, fair play. Who is next? It was Rooty who wanted it, kind of second. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so Rooty, well done, uh, second place. A really <laughs> good result for you. Um, yeah, yeah, I first, first told, told you on the season, so we would be better. Although, at the end there, there was, was there a bit of contact between you and Tay? Yeah, uh, Tay didn't sound happy about it. Turn three. Yeah, yeah I think. think. I didn't, I didn't see, see anything, anything in my steering wheel, but I, 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 I don't know if we have, have a contact, contact or not. Because uh, going up I, I, turn three right toward the end of the race, obviously Tate was on worn hards at that point, you were all on fresher softs. <laughs> but um, oh, at the top of the hill, I think you uh, I, you hit the back of him, it sent him off a bit, which now both you and Wrighton ended up ahead okay. on the final lap. I think so, too. That's right. Yeah, well, that's okay. the game. If there's any point, I'll do that. But yeah, all in all, a great, a great race from you. Any, anything else to comment on your race? You had a good battle with Wrighton at the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I got my strategy working well. well. Two sets of me, medium, and then soft. Yeah, I can say both you and Wrighton did the exact same thing on strategy. Yeah. yeah. Which segues us on beautifully to Wrighton. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> um, I did a great race. Um, after the start, um, I was behind Nike. Um, I didn't notice the driver was braking earlier than expected, so I, was, I think it was Walt out in front of Nike, so he braked early. I didn't expect it. So I kind of hit Nike, then hit into Walt up. Right. Um, so other than that, um, I, I just followed. I was just following Nike. I knew he had the pace, so I just kept behind Nike, and then Rudy, then they made so well kind of battling on the second turn, which allowed us through. Um, with the strategy, I kind of got it wrong. I stayed out one lap too long, which affected his putting us behind Nike. Ruby, but um, I was pushing like crazy on the final stint to get them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say we could tell that because uh, well done on getting fastest lap right and I know but um, oh, it, was yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> it was thanks to Ruby really and um because I knew T must have been staying out. Um so I was kinda of hoping um T might have pulled them up a bit more so which is now just to catch up. But um he paid off in the end. I was happy with the third or fourth, but um, I thought I could have got Rudy on the last corner maybe, but I didn't want to take the chance. Mm. Like I was going to say, do you think, do you reckon that if you had like one more lap you'd have gotten Rudy? Because you were very close at the end there. It was, it was um, intense as that. It just depended if Rudy had uh, any overtake left, because I didn't have I don't think any of you did. 
I was I was looking right, at, at the end. I was just flicking through, and Rooty, <laughs> Wrighton, and Tate. None of you had any overtake left. I think I used. Yeah. I think I used. We find. I think I had a tight. Must have had a tiny bit just to get past Tate. Yeah, I was saving my overtime until the last game, so that's what I did. Yeah, yeah, so it was funny. It was just like, oh, now second, I'm not catching them. I wonder if he's using the overtake at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so, um, like Don, obviously, uh, I noticed as well at some point, I think it was Gemini, you tried to lap around the first corner and there was contact there while she was closing on on tail. What was your thoughts on that? And uh, final question. Oh. Yeah. Uh, final question then. Uh, next week is Monza, uh, Slipstream St Central. Thoughts on that one? Hopefully, just get past the first chicane and then just knuckle yeah. off. <laughs> 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 I'm quite fun with Monza. I like Monza, so I'm Yeah. And it's, all, it's all about slipstream, slipstream and fuel save. Because if you're in the slipstream, you're gonna get, you're gonna save fuel. So. Oh, by the way, Nike, uh, Gemini's just said on the stream. He says uh, he didn't. He thought you were already past him at the time of the contact. Bit of miscommunication, really. But yeah, so uh, thanks for the odds, and uh, well done to the lot of you, and uh, good luck for next week. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 Uh, end the stream here then. So if anyone's watching the stream and uh, hasn't already subscribed, please do so for uh, coverage of the Super Formulas and Group 3s live. Or Lobby A Group 3s anyway, if I don't turn my PlayStation off. Yeah, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, hope you enjoyed the stream and goodbye.